Well, you guys might be wondering why I'm still in Oklahoma. <laughs> well, at least it looks like Oklahoma, doesn't it? Well, um, I got tonight, tomorrow morning, and tomorrow night before I absolutely have to be back in, in the Houston area. So I'm going to hunt every day I can. Just romanced my wife in Branson. I went and saw that, uh, that uh, live play called... Uh, Jesus and man, it was awesome. If y'all haven't seen that, you need to go see it. But uh, I just, uh, I'm in this area where I was at in October of this year, just kind of scouting, and then also I hunted here about three or four days before it just started rain, raining me out. But um, already, just a, a probably 250 yards maybe from where I was hunting before. Looky there, big old. Uh, rub right there. Got to scrape right up on that oak tree that's, that's uh, got the leaves coming off it up there. But it doesn't look like it's been freshened up in a few days, probably. But I bet you there's a big buck in here. And since I've only got one day, I don't want to go traipsing through here and throw all kinds of scent through here. So I'm just going to set up over there because tomorrow we have a north wind. Right now we got a southwest wind blowing this way going that way. Tomorrow it's going to be directly blowing that way. So I'm going to go set up in a tree on the end of this little old, old logging road. It doesn't, you can't even tell it's a road anymore, but, but I'm going to go set up over there on the end of it because it's good wind for either tonight or tomorrow. And I'm going to sit all day tomorrow right there. And Lord willing, I'm going to meet this buck right up this trail somewhere along the way. So Stay tuned. Nothing new under the sun, one life to live seeking fun. But shallow is the self-lived life, for me, myself, oh, so much strife. But Jesus is the answer for a life perplexed and wanting more. It's never easy self to deny, but it's the only way to a life on high. is 54 degrees so it's gonna be in the 40s and 50s which would be really good uh slip down the hill probably i'm probably 250 yards from where i'll be sleeping tonight but i just only have a day and a half tonight and to all day tomorrow so i just said i thought to myself once i find sign i'm just gonna set up on it and so we got us a scrape or excuse me a rub right over here right down there there's a rub, really fresh one. There's a scrape right here. That's probably 17, 18 yards. And then there's another rub down over here, about another rub about 35 yards. So this is kind of an intersection where a few trails come together. Old logging road, you can't even tell it's a road anymore except the fact that it's wide. It's, it's uh, pretty grown in. And um, I set that evening and then also the next day over this scrape and uh, two rubs, never saw anything. So it is back to the ranch. All right, guys, we're, uh, we're going to set up on this trail. There's a heavy trail right here coming through here. So I put up a uh, game cam right over here probably three months ago. I've been catching this big buck coming through here. Big, tall, eight point, tall, wide. And uh, so this is probably gonna be my spot to hunt. Finally, just got out here actually yesterday, but um, finally uh, seeing him during the day. And that was just like yesterday or day before yesterday in the morning right here. So I'm going to get this set up where I can sit in this tree. I'm going to sit in this tree as high as I can 
and uh, cut some lanes to shoot, be able to shoot this way and that way. I'll be able to shoot out in front of me. The one bad thing about this spot is uh, I'm only 40 yards from the property line, maybe 50. But this is the way he comes in and off my property. So that's where we're gonna hunt. I'll just have to ask for permission if he runs over there to the other, my neighbors over here. Two neighbors, there's actually two uh, properties right back over here. So let's get this stuff put up and let it sit. North wind tomorrow, <coughs> and a north wind isn't the best. A uh, east northeast wind is the best, or a northeast wind, or an east wind is, is actually the best. But um, right now we got a south wind, and that's not the best because it blows it back this way unless the deer comes from this way. So I'm gonna, I'm only gonna sit it when it's uh, really good. So let's uh, get to work. All right, guys, we are in our perfect little setup for this big buck. And hopefully he's gonna come right down this trail. And we're gonna whack him at about 12 yards. That would be awesome. He could uh, hang up over here as well. We'll see. This is an awesome setup in this tree. Nice and cut, I've cut out some shooting lanes, as you can see here. I've cut out some shooting lanes, one here, one here, one right over here, and then another one right through here so I can shoot that way and also see him coming in if he comes in this way. I've also cut a tiny shooting lane here, and then a, another shooting lane in here, and then right down at this bottom so I can shoot all directions. So, we shall see. All right, let's get done. This little buck reads the script perfectly. And uh, I could actually smell this buck before I ever saw him. So I knew there was a buck probably over there because the breeze was pretty brisk blowing right in my face uh, from the direction this buck came from. But what I what you see is the reason why I can't zoom in is I've I've I'm filming this on my iPhone and uh I'm trying to get the big camera flipped around but he's kind of looking that direction and actually by the time I get everything set up to where I've got the big camera on him he gets a little nervous and comes behind me and then fast forward to after the evening hunt well, guys, it was a good hunt tonight. I was a little bit underdressed. <laughs> it was 70 degrees when I went out there about 4 o'clock tonight. And then uh, the temperature dropped about 10 degrees. And I sat there and was bored for probably the two, two and a half, or two hours and 15 minutes before the sun, or actually about 15 minutes um, after the sun went down. I noticed two doe coming in behind me. And I, I don't know how in the world they didn't smell me because when they came in, they they stayed behind me uh, down. I could have shot them in there. I cut a hole back out behind me. But uh, it was a little too dark for a good camera light to shoot a doe. I got plenty of time to shoot more doe if I want to, but probably would have shot them if they came in 30 minutes earlier when I got good film filming light. <laughs> But uh, they came perfectly around the tree. Again, I don't know how they didn't smell me because they were perfectly downwind. Came around the tree and were probably about, oh, 15 yards down below me. I could have shot them uh, while they were standing there. But uh, it was a fun sit watching those deer come in. So anyways, I'm going to be back out in that same tree tomorrow morning because I still have that big boy uh, that came a couple of mornings. And so if he continues this pattern... Um, he's going to be killable. So we'll see what happens. Had a great encounter this morning with a buck. Came back over in the backside over there. Had a uh, younger doe here at the feeder. And that buck came in. She looked up and was watching that buck. And I knew there was something else over there. And he, he circled all the way around over here. Back over here, I gave him some grunts when he got over here. 
and he turned and I thought he was coming. I was like, yeah, it's working. But he came around and then went around over here and then across this flat right there and then back, I think it's into these trees over here. But And I was, uh, there's a scrape right there. Hmm, a couple of scrapes. I need to freshen those up. But I was gonna sit in that tree over there in a tree stand. That was my original plan last night. Then on my north blind, which is over this direction, I saw a big buck that had come yesterday morning. And, uh, but the wind's all bad, so I couldn't sit there. And I thought, well, I'll just go sit the middle blind. I should have stuck with my original plan and sat right there because that buck came 20 yards from that tree stand. <laughs> That's the way it goes when you're shooting with a bow. I could have killed him with a rifle pretty easy. But... So the wind was finally right. Had a change in direction, got a north wind. So I was going to go sit that north blind where I had I'd caught uh, this big 10-point. I believe he's a 10-point on camera during uh, early, early morning light. And so I thought this is my best chance for a big buck. I'm going to go ahead and sit over in that stand. And I, I, I knew I was, it was going to be early when those deer got there, so I didn't even do an interview. But I had these uh, doe come in early, a couple of doe. And then, um, then I had this small buck come in. And then uh, the big boy showed up. So watch this. He's a dead buck for sure. That's the biggest buck of my life for sure. It's going to be an all day wait. It's about maybe 8 o'clock. Maybe I'll just lay down right there and I'll sneak out.
Yeah, there, right there, right there on my neighbor's property. That's about 100 yards over there. But he was stumbling. So as you saw, that the shot was a little bit back. That's probably, I'm thinking liver and, and um, uh, stomach. Probably did not catch any, uh, any of the lung. I thought it might have been a one lung and uh, liver and stomach before, but uh, after looking at the video, doesn't look like it to me. So I've called my neighbor and my neighbor's given me permission to go over there. He's not gonna be here till tomorrow. So uh, thank you, um, Salvador. I appreciate you letting me uh, find, go find that buck. So hopefully we're gonna find this buck after we eat some Thanksgiving afternoon dinner and then it's gonna be late, probably late afternoon uh, early evening before we go look for that buck. All right, guys, it's been about eight hours since I shot that buck. And we pulled out the high power uh, AR <laughs> just in case he's still in his bed or something. I don't want to lose this buck. Last place I saw him was right through here, so hopefully we're going to get him right in those trees right there. But I don't know. But we're going to have to turn this off because. My son is going to be my eyes, and I'm going to be the shooter, so here we go. Hey. What is it, Michael? Get him. What is he doing? Hey, guys. We found him. <laughs> He's dead right here. He's about to... He maybe ran 120 yards. He's, a, well, maybe 140 yards, 150 yards, because he's about 50 yards on my neighbor's property. But Draco, my daughter's little puppy, he's probably, what, six months old, Desire? Yeah. Six months old. And he found the deer. He was That's like, we were going the wrong way. We'd find a little blood and he'd find it. And then he'd go off some other way. <laughs> it's like, that dog's natural. My goodness. All right, let's go get him. Come over here. He broke off his uh, part of this tine here, and he's broke off his uh, brow tine as well. He's been scrapping and fighting, probably. All rutted up his neck. Wow, what an awesome hunt. This uh, shot was actually not as bad as I thought. Probably one lung and liver. Uh, it's just he was quartering to me a little bit. I should have had that arrow more like in the crease of his shoulder. It would have been a double lung for sure. So, um, but anyways, we're going to get take some pictures and get him taken care of and in the freezer and uh then we're gonna get out and do some more hunting uh jesse and kazai are gonna be hunting tomorrow so all right hopefully we'll get some more deer down thanks for watching this is indian creek bow hunting journal be sure and subscribe give us a thumbs up and we, we will and also remind tick the reminder bell and we'll uh you'll get notice of any future videos thank you for watching